I asked you to name a PS1 game, your mind would probably jump to something like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, Tomb Raider, or Final Fantasy VII. But if you started gaming more recently, you'd only know about those games because of their remakes. There's a good chunk of old gaming mascots that haven't gotten the same treatments and have largely been forgotten by their creators. And one such character is a spiky-haired anime boy with a bug net. Spike, also known as Kakeru, is the protagonist of Ape Escape, a collectathon platformer released for the PlayStation in 1999 and the first game to require the use of two analog sticks. Rather than using the right stick for the camera though, Ape Escape used it to control a variety of gadgets to aid Spike in his quest to catch monkeys across time and space. The game was successful enough to spawn two sequels, multiple spin-offs, an appearance in PlayStation All-Stars, and solidified the DualShock as the standard controller design for the rest of Sony's history. Even Microsoft and Nintendo adopted similar designs because of it. Ape Escape may have been dormant for the past decade, but such a legacy can't go unrewarded. And that's why I believe that Spike deserves a chance to be in Super Smash Bros. Maybe not an ultimate, but at some point. Of course, there is one big issue standing in his way. Ape Escape is a first-party franchise for Sony, meaning they made it and they own it. And while being owned by a rival console manufacturer didn't stop Banjo or Steve, Sony is a lot more stingy when it comes to their IPs. Also, every fighter so far has made at least one Nintendo appearance, even Cloud and Joker, while Ape Escape has been limited to the PlayStation family. But hey, Sakurai is the king of left field. If he wants to do something, it gets done. It's not completely impossible, and it's just fun to speculate. Now let's figure out what Spike's moveset would be if he did join. Ape Escape has a wide variety of gadgets to pick from, so let's start there for his B moves. I'm gonna do something crazy though, and cover them in reverse order. For Spike's down special, he whips out the RC car. The player can drive the car around the stage using the joystick. If it touches another player, or takes damage, it will explode. I imagine the car would have about the same speed and explosive power as the Bomb Chew item. Of course, Spike is a sitting duck while driving, so the player can press A or B to regain control of him, and they can also jump cancel or shield cancel out of it. Also, if the car gets too far away from Spike, it will have such poor reception that it won't move any further. If the car doesn't receive any new inputs for about 10 seconds, it will explode on its own. Next is the Up Special, and what better recovery for Spike than the Sky Flyer? This mini propeller will cause Spike to rise into the air while also damaging anyone above him. Pressing B once will cause it to twirl for a brief moment before leaving Spike helpless. But if you mash B instead, Spike will rise slightly higher and descend much more slowly, making it good at horizontal recovery as well. Next we have the Dash Hoop. This super speedy spinning circle is Spike's side special. Try saying that five times fast. This move works like a combination of Sonic's Spin Dash and Peach's Peach Bomber. The player has to hold the button for a moment to build up power, but once it's fully charged, Spike dashes forward at high speed. If he hits an opponent while dashing, he'll deal massive damage while also bouncing back a little. The hoop will also block projectiles even while charging, but only from the side and only at waist level. If the player jumps or moves in the opposite direction while dashing, the dash will be cancelled. Now for the big one, the neutral special. This move is usually reserved for the main thing the character does in their games. It can do shoots lightning, Bowser breathes fire, Meta Knight breaks the game balance. The main thing Spike does is catch monkeys. Or is it? As much as simply swinging a net would work, I want to get a bit more creative here. The main gameplay mechanic of Ape Escape is switching between gadgets with the four face buttons and then controlling them with the right stick. So Spike's neutral special is the gadget swap feature itself. Steve has his entire game in one move, so why can't Spike? Holding B brings up a menu, and the player presses up, down, left, or right to choose a gadget, similar to Schultz's Monado Arts. They can choose between the Stun Club, the Monkey Net, the Slingback Shooter, or Slingshot, and the Banana Ring. Whatever gadget the player chooses will be used for Spike's A moves until they pick a new one. This gives Spike more of a Pokemon trainer situation where you've got four unique playstyles in one character slot. 
Do you main one gadget the entire time? Or do you switch things up and adapt on the fly? And because you don't have to go through multiple styles before reading the one you want, the transition will be much smoother. Of course, there is one issue with this. Kirby. Kirby can copy any fighter, but he always copies their neutral special specifically. It makes little sense for him to use a move that changes his A moves when his A moves are designed never to change. But this issue has popped up before with workarounds. Olimar Kirby combines Olimar's neutral and side specials into a single move, so maybe there's a similar solution for this. After choosing a gadget, Kirby immediately transitions into that gadget's side tilt. As for Spike Kirby's design, Spike Wig could work, but Monkey Helmet would be funnier and more recognisable. Now let's get into the A moves. Like I said, these would vary depending on which gadget Spike has equipped. So let's start with the ones that don't change. Spike's dash attack has him lunge headfirst into his opponent. This move comes from Ape Escape 2, where Spike isn't the protagonist, but is unlocked as a 100% completion bonus. For the grab, he uses another tool from Ape Escape 2, the Electromagnet. This grab is actually able to bypass Hero's Declang, and any metal opponent's Spike grabs will be unable to wiggle free. His pummel has him use the magnet to shock the opponent, which technically isn't true to Ape Escape, but neither is Dr. Mario's electric side smash. This move also deals double damage against metal opponents. For the forward throw, Spike whipped up a new Gecta, vacuum cleaner from a Japan exclusive spin-off game, and launches the opponent from it. The back throw has him turn around and hit them with the magic punt, which can also hit anyone that hasn't been grabbed by him. The up throw uses the water cannon, acting like a more violent version of Pac-Man's Hydrant. And the down throw has Spike fire the water net at point blank, temporarily trapping the opponent on the ground. Now for the moves that have the same animations for all gadgets, but properties like hitboxes, damage, knockback, and secondary effects will still vary. This might seem lazy, but Ape Escape lets you ground pound with a remote and still deal damage. Spike's jab is a simple three-stroke melee combo based on this idle animation. His down tilt is a simple sweep while crouching. The neutral air is a front flip and comes from the first half of Ape Escape 2's ground pound animation. The second half is used as the down air. The up smash is based on this maneuver from Ape Escape 2, which I like to call the spring swing. And finally, the Down Smash uses the Stun Club Spin, though not necessarily with the Stun Club. Now let's cover the gadget exclusive moves. The Stun Club, equipped by default, is a basic swordplay gadget with basic swordplay attacks. It has the most damage output with average knockback, about the same as Link's Sword. Side Tilt is a basic forward swing straight from the first game, and the Up Tilt is a simple stab upwards like this. The forward, back, and up airs are all a 90 degree swing in the corresponding direction. Moving in one direction while attacking in another is a thing you can do in Ape Escape after all. I think Spike should also have a unique mechanic where he turns around after a back air. Finally, the Side Smash is a classic home run swing, though not nearly as powerful as the back. The Monkey Net has all the same animations as the Stun Club, except the up tilt is less stabby and more swingy. The net is also significantly weaker, dealing about a tenth of the damage and having mid to poor knockback. However, the net has a sweet spot, and a rather wide one at that, that catches opponents in its grasp for a second throwing option, similar to Isabel's fishing rod. This throw is the strongest throw in the game, having the same KO potential as Pyra's uncharged side smash. The net also has one more use that I'll talk about later. Next is the Slingback Shooter, or Slingshot, or Catapult, or whatever you want to call it. This gadget specializes in long-range projectile attacks, but its melee has the shortest reach. The side tilt fires a normal pellet straight ahead, though it can also be angled up and down. The pellet would have decent damage, but opponents wouldn't flinch from it. It can also be reflected and pocketed. The up tilt is the same thing, but upwards. The forward, back, and up airs are once again identical, firing in the desired direction. Unlike the tilts though, these shots are explosive shots, with the same power as a thrown bobber. These can also be reflected and pocketed. And the side smash, of course, has to be the homing shot. This would behave much like Samus's missile homing in on nearby targets. The more charged the attack is, the faster and stronger the projectile. 
Finally, we have the Banana Ring from Ape Escape 2. This gadget has the widest hitbox, but doesn't have quite as much projectile range as the slingshot. The side and up tilts have Spike throw the banana ring in those directions before it returns to him. If the player holds the A button, it will spin in place for a moment before it returns, similar to Pyra's Blazing End. Also like Blazing End, Spike can still move and jump while waiting for the banana ring to return, but he can't use any other attacks or special moves. The banana ring can be reflected, but it can't be pocketed. For its aerials, Spike throws the banana ring in an arc in the desired direction. And the side smash is a strong melee attack where he slams it into the ground like a hammer. The banana ring also has one other passive mechanic. Smell. Every time an opponent gets hit by it, they're coated with its banana -y scent. The more damage they take, the stronger the scent. The scent would be at its strongest after taking about 50% worth of banana ring damage but would gradually get weaker over time. But what does the banana sense do, you ask? That's where this next mechanic comes in. You can't really have ape escape without apes to escape. What if we could incorporate the iconic Peepo Monkey into Spike's moveset? If Spike presses B while shielding, he gets out the monkey radar, which pings and beeps for a few seconds. Once it's finished, a monkey will appear in a random location on the stage. This monkey will essentially be its own assist trophy, running around the stage to attack players with a scratch attack. The monkey will always target the player with the strongest banana scent, and can even cling to walls and ceilings to reach them. However, if Spike has the banana ring equipped, the monkey will target him instead. Each attack the monkey lands will reduce the victim's scent based on the damage dealt, and it will only change targets after a full attack cycle, or if it is damaged itself. Players can damage and KO the monkey just like assist trophies, and it even counts towards their KO score in time battles. What's more, if Spike, or Kirby, hits the monkey with the sweet spot of his net, he'll catch it and gain a huge boost to all his stats, much like the Xerneas Pokeball. Spike can also interact with other players' monkeys as he would his own, but can only benefit from one stat boost at a time. So what are the drawbacks? First, Spike can only summon one monkey per stock. Secondly, the monkey despawns after 10 to 30 seconds, depending on the size of the stage, or if Spike himself gets KO'd. Thirdly, catching the monkey won't count towards Spike's KO score, nor will letting it KO someone else for you. And finally, if Spike hits the monkey with the sour spot of the net, the monkey will steal it off him and catch Spike instead, instantly KOing him. For his final smash, Spike gets out a giant version of the monkey net and swings it down in front of him. Anyone caught by the net is teleported into a cutscene where they are hit by Spectre's karate jumping space station from Ape Escape 3. Additionally, anyone who's over 100% before the cutscene is instantly KO'd. Keyword, before. Consider it mercy. Now for the smaller touches. There's a fair amount you can do with Spike's taunts. For his up taunt, Spike gets a guest appearance from Pipochi from Ape Escape 2, who shows up to cheer him on. The side taunt has him pull out a pair of binoculars, which is actually one of his idol animations. And we get another one for his down taunt, where he puts on a pair of snazzy shades and poses for the camera. For his alternate costumes, there are a bunch of outfits from spin-offs like Pumpkin Primes that could work, but I think we can do better. Spike is only the protagonist of the first Ape Escape, so let's pull a hero and get the others as costumes. Jimmy slash Hikaru from Ape Escape 2, and K slash Satoru and Yumi slash Sayaka from Ape Escape 3. Each of them would, of course, get an alternate color scheme. Spike gets a blue color based on his friend Buzz, Yumi gets a greenish blue color based on Natsumi's Ape Escape 2 appearance, and K and Yumi could each get one of their Morph Gear outfits. For my picks, we'll go with Miracle Ninja K and Dragon Kung Fu Fighter Yumi. I did consider adding Spectre as a skin or Echo Fighter as well, but his body proportions are too different from Spike's, and I think he'd work better as a separate character anyway. But he should absolutely be a spirit. There's quite a few options for what stage Ape Escape could bring, but two in particular stand out to me. Option one is Spectre Land, because the role of antagonist has been the only consistent element of the series. Option two is the Time Station, which was also a stage in PlayStation All-Stars. Though the Smash version would be a touring stage traveling to just about anywhere in the series. So, do I expect Spike to be in Smash? No. Do 
Do I think he's likely? No. Did I come up with a third question? No. But it's always fun to speculate. The Final Smash Ultimate DLC fighter is just around the corner, and I can't wait to find out who it is.